Apoptosis comes from Greek apo, meaning from, and tosis, meaning falling. Together, it literally means falling off. Apoptosis is a pathway of cell death that is induced by a tightly regulated suicide program in which cells destined to die activate intrinsic enzymes that degrade the cell's own nuclear DNA and nuclear cytoplasmic proteins. Apoptosis is important in that its dysregulation, meaning little or too much of it, is the basis of several diseases, including autoimmune diseases, cancers, neurodegenerative diseases, and many other types of diseases. But what actually causes apoptosis? Apoptosis occurs both physiologically as a part of normal development and throughout adulthood as well as in certain pathological conditions. In fact, it is needed in situations where we need to get rid of a faulty cell without provoking a messy host inflammation. Physiological instances in which apoptosis occur include menstrual cycle, elimination of lymphocytes that are self-reactive and attack self-antigens, and many more. A few pathological instances include removal of mutated cells or those with damaged DNA, cells with accumulation of misfolded proteins, atrophy of a damaged organ, and many more. But let's take a look at what an apoptotic cell would look like. Let's take a look at the morphology of an apoptotic cell. So, an apoptotic cell shrinks in size as opposed to other forms of cell injuries in which cells swell. Chromatin condensation is the most characteristic feature of apoptosis. Chromatin aggregates peripherally under the nuclear membrane. Apoptotic cells also form blebs, which then fragment and form the apoptotic bodies. Apoptotic bodies are then phagocytosed by macrophages. Let's take a look at how apoptosis is induced or mechanisms of apoptosis. Apoptosis happens as a result of activation of enzymes called caspases. Caspases are in fact cysteine proteases that cleave proteins after aspartic residues, meaning they go through the protein chain and cut it right after the aspartic residue. Apoptosis process can be divided into three phases, initiation phase, execution phase, and degradation phase. Initiation phase itself can occur via two different pathways, intrinsic or mitochondrial pathway or extrinsic or death receptor initiated pathway. So firstly, let's take a look at the intrinsic or mitochondrial pathway. Intrinsic or mitochondrial pathway. This pathway starts from within the cell's mitochondria as a result of growth factor deprivation, DNA protein misfolding, and in many more instances. Please pay attention to the fact that in all these cases, what initiates the pathway is an internal factor, so we don't have an external receptor-mediated signal that arrives at the cell and initiates a, an intracellular pathway. It's all internal, like protein misfolding or DNA damage or things like that. Proapoptotic molecules or death proteins are released from mitochondrial intramembranous space into the cytoplasm. Cytochrome C is a well-known death molecule. Once in the cytosol, these proteins can induce apoptosis. The release of these death molecules is controlled by BCL2 family of proteins. More than 20 members of BCL2 family can be divided into three groups. So let's, let's separately take a look at these three groups. So these three groups are anti-apoptotic group, 
pro-apoptotic group and sensors. So I think the name pretty much shows that the anti-apoptotic group is the group that is going to work against apoptosis and uh, the pro-apoptotic group are the molecules that are going to act in favor of apoptosis happening. So you can imagine that a balance between these two groups is going to control how apoptosis is going to happen. And the last group, sensors, are the ones ones that actually sense it and um, sense if an apoptosis is necessary or not. So uh, in the anti-apoptotic group, we could name BCL2, BCLXL, and MCL1 as principal members. They possess four BH or BCL2 homology domains called BH1 to 4. They reside in the outer mitochondrial membrane as well as the cytosol and they also prevent leakage of death-inducing or apoptotic proteins by decreasing outer mitochondrial permeability. So by preventing uh, the leakage of them, of course, they are working against apoptosis because if these molecules actually get into the cytosol, they are going to uh, start the cascade that leads to apoptosis. Let's take a look at pro-apoptotic ones now. So, uh, BAX and BAC are two principal members of this group. They also possess four BH domains. However, they increase outer mitochondrial permeability, allowing the leakage of death proteins such as cytochrome C, so exactly opposite of anti-apoptotic group. And the sensors, uh, the major uh, members would be BAD or BAD, BIM, BID, PUMA, and NOXA. They contain only one BH domain, the third of the four BH domains, and hence they are often referred to as the BH3 only proteins. They act as sensors of cellular stress and damage, and they regulate the balance between the two other groups. So let's get back to where we were. We were talking about the initiation phase and in fact the intrinsic or mitochondrial pathway of the in initiation phase. So the idea was that we have these uh, death proteins or pro-apoptotic molecules. A good example of them is cytochrome C. These are inside the intramembranous space. They are also in the cytosol, but it's a matter of their concentration. So in case they get out of the intramembranous space of the mitochondria and they get into the cytosol, their um, concentration is going to increase and are going to initiate the apoptosis. So this BCL2 family is going to control how much of these death, death molecules is going to actually get into the cytosol. How does that happen? So growth factors and other survival signals stimulate the production of anti-apoptotic proteins such as BCL2. But once they are lifted, or in the case of DNA damage or accumulation of misfolded proteins, BH3-only proteins, meaning the sensors, are going to sense the damage and pro promote pro-apoptotic proteins, shifting the balance in favor of apoptosis and activation of caspases. So let's take a look at the example of cytochrome C and see what happens. Once it is in the cytosol, it binds to a protein called apoptosis activating factor 1 or APAF1, forming a structure called apoptosome. Apoptosome binds caspase 9, which is the critical caspase in the mitochondrial pathway, initiating an auto-amplification process by which other caspases are also activated. So that's how cytochrome C works. Uh, but other pro-apoptotic proteins or death molecules, they work by neutralizing inhibitors of apoptosis or IAPs and therefore permitting the initiation of caspase cascades.
So, okay, so let's review where we are. We're talking about apoptosis and the fact that it has three phases, initiation phase, execution phase, and degradation phase. We're talking about the initiation phase. Uh, we already talked about the intrinsic pathway of initiation or the mitochondrial pathway. Now we want to talk about the extrinsic pathway or death receptor initiated pathway. So as you would imagine, this pathway has, um, has a, a receptor and ligand involved. It's directly initiated from outside by external signal that works through a receptor. So a, good, a couple of good examples of it would be a, the case of cytotoxic T-lymphocyte mediated apoptosis of infected host cells or in case of elimination of lymphocytes that recognize self-antigen as foreign and and cause autoimmune diseases. So death receptors are mostly members of tumor necrosis factor receptor family or TNF receptor family. One of the best known of uh, receptors of this family is TNFR1. Another one would be a related protein called FAS or CD95. Now let's take a look at the ligand and see where the ligands come from. For example, FAS ligand or FASL is produced by T cells and cytotoxic T lymphocytes. So to put it in a nutshell, we have these defective cells, for example, infected host cells or defective lymphocytes that are rec recognizing self-antigens. What happens is that they are expressing these receptors that can be, for example, TNFR1 or FAS or, um, or such receptors, and then T cells or cytotoxic T lymphocytes come there and just express the ligand, for example, FASL. So what happens then is that FAS and FAS ligand bind, creating a new domain for attachment of an adapter protein called FAS-associated death domain, or FADD. FADD binds an inactive form of caspase, caspase 8 and 10, activating the caspase cascade. Okay, so as you see, the extrinsic pathway, just as well as the intrinsic pathway, can also bring us to the point of activation of the initiator caspases. And from this point on, the execution phase can start. Like a difference that is worth paying attention to is that in the intrinsic pathway, we had caspase 9 as our major caspase. But here in the extrinsic pathway, we can point to caspase 8 and 10 as our major caspases. One more point to mention is that the extrinsic pathway can be inhibited by a protein called FLEP. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the execution phase. We got to the point where initiator caspases were activated. So once an initiator caspase is cleaved to generate its active form, the enzymatic death program is set in motion, resulting in the activation of executioner caspases, such as caspase 3 and 6. So these caspases work on several cell components. For instance, they cleave an inhibitor of cytoplasmic DNAs and thus make the DNAs enzymatically active, inducing cleavage of DNA. Okay, so let's take a look at the degradation phase or removal of dead cells. So we know that uh, whatever is left behind after apoptosis is immediately picked up because we know that apoptosis does not stimulate any sort of inflammation response. It's pretty clean. It doesn't make a mess. So everything is picked up immediately. So we know that the cell blebs, we already know that, but then these blebs eventually um, turn into apoptotic bodies. So at the end, 
What's left behind are apoptotic bodies. These bite-sized pieces, ready to be phagocytosed, actively promote their phagocytosis in several different ways. In a way, they mark themselves as eat me. So they do so in several different ways. For example, phosphatidylserin, present in the inner plasma membrane of healthy cells, flips out and is expressed on the other uh, side of the membrane and the outer membrane of the apoptotic cells, which is it's, uh, this is itself a mark that calls for phagocytosis. Some apoptotic bodies are coated by thrombospondine, which is an adhesive glycoprotein that is also rec recognized by phagocytes. Apoptotic bodies may also become coated by natural antibodies and proteins of the complement system, notably C1Q. But also macrophages take some effort in order to just pick up the uh, apoptotic bodies. For example, they produce proteins that bind to apoptotic cells, inducing their engulfment. So these are just a few ways by which phagocytosis of apoptotic bodies are promoted. They are removed so quickly so as not to provoke a secondary necrosis. Okay, so here's a quick summary of apoptosis. So apoptosis is a programmed cell death in which we don't really cause any sort of mess or any inflammatory response. It has uh, three different phases, initiation phase, execution phase, and degradation phase. Initiation phase can happen through two different pathways, the intrinsic or mitochondrial pathway, as well as the extrinsic or receptor-mediated pathway. The intrinsic pathway is mostly regulated by BCL2 families. There are three major groups of them, anti-apoptotic, pro-apoptotic, and sensors. A balance between the expression of anti-apoptotic and pro-apoptotic members of the BCL2 family defines the amount of death protein that are released from the intramembranous space into the cytoplasm. A very important pro-apoptotic molecule or death protein is cytochrome C. Once death molecules are in the cytosol, they create apoptosomes and bind caspases. The most important caspase of the intrinsic pathway is caspase 9. The extrinsic pathway is receptor mediated. T cells produce FAS ligands. FAS ligands bind to FAS receptors or TNFR1 receptors. Then we have our adapter protein or FADD binding to the whole complex. This activates the caspases. The most important caspases are caspase 8 and 10 for the extrinsic pathway. This pathway can, can be inhibited by a protein called FLIP. So in the execution phase, the initiator caspases are already activated, which leads to the activation of executioner caspases, for example, caspase 3 and 6, which work in different components and just make the apoptosis happen. Eventually, we have the degradation phase or the removal of dead cells. In this phase, we only have apoptotic bodies left behind, which mark themselves as eat me by expressing molecules such as thrombospondine or phosphatidylserine, and they are eaten and engulfed by phagocytes, so nothing is really left behind. Thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you want, you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to take a look at synapse.org.